He has this rocking oh. chair that was my husband's grandfather's rocking chair. So okay, it's an nice. old rocking chair, but it's still in good condition. So he has this rocking chair and the panda sits in the rocking chair in the corner. And he jumps from his bed to the panda on the rocking on a rocking chair and then they fall on the floor <laughs> i've told him he should probably put the panda to where the panda falls on the floor first you know yeah. soften the blow but nope nope <laughs> uh, it's his game <laughs> it is his game I'm if there. he wants to soften the panda's blow with his body go for it so oh and no, I had I had like this vision whenever I thought of this idea to buy him this, you know, six oh foot panda. Gosh. I was like, no, I can already see him at like a teenager. He's hanging out with his friends, <laughs> playing video games, lounging on a beanbag, and it's going to be a panda. <laughs> I've decided. Because that, that scales, right? Oh you want gosh. stuff that lasts. You do. But, but also that they want to keep well, around. And especially when you only have one kid, you want stuff, you want to buy stuff that's going to be around for a while that you don't it's not one of those one-off purchases that it's going to be broken a week or torn yeah. up in a week you want something to last because why spend the money on something that's going to be broken a week right yeah i just i don't see the point but unless it's really fucking cool uh, yeah well that's true because we have bought okay case in point we went to the dollar store yesterday and Corey wanted to spend his own money at the dollar store he has own money it's weird like, he doesn't have a job whoa no but he's lost two teeth and he's done uh, chores for money he's selling his body parts no for money. he's done chores for money he's lost a tooth you know tooth fairy but so i was like okay against my better judgment you can use your own money because i want him to keep his money i don't want him to use you know, I want him to keep his money for what he wants, which that's what he was doing. So anyway, so he bought this net and he said, Grandma, I can use this to get the stuff out of the bottom of the pool. I'm like, oh, brilliant idea. He gets this net and he gets a couple other things for his money and he goes up and he pays for all of it. <laughs> we get in the car. Mind you. I am the most awkward person in the world. I, no. if, if anything's going to happen, it's because of me. It's because I dropped it or I did. So we get in the car and I'm trying to get him used to getting in and out on my side of the car because he's opening his do own door now. So I'm trying to get him used to doing that. So he gets in the car and he leaves all of his stuff on this side and he gets into his car seat. And I shut the door and I'm like, oh, that's weird. It didn't shut. So I push the door to shut it and I hear snap. Oh no, what did I do? I opened the door and the net broke. <laughs> the handle broke, it was in the door. <laughs> it was like, Grandma. He's like, we literally just bought that. Dude. So we just thought, okay so anyway i broke it i was like ah. he goes that's okay you can buy me a new one <laughs> that's not wrong okay you did break it i know at first i got a little offended and i thought well i did break it it is my fault yeah i said okay i'll buy you a better one <laughs> that way it won't break and then i found out it was made out of wood covered in plastic from the dollar store so obviously it's not gonna so I'm going to get him a, a plastic one instead, you know. Okay. So, yeah, that was, I think Thursday we did that. No, that was yesterday. Yeah, we went to our favorite hamburger joint to get hamburgers and stopped at the dollar store on the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was closed. It was like whoa okay they had a family emergency because this place does not close they're open a set days 
set times and they're always open i mean there's no so i was like oh so i called your dad and i told him hey uh can't get that today <laughs> he's like what i'm gonna go to facebook and find out why it's like yeah because something's happened and it's a family-owned business so yeah. it's a small business so obviously oh, something's happened so yeah oops um something did happen so they had a funeral but uh, people died so we went over to uh ron's to get hamburgers instead and we get in there and this this girl is a lady lady so cute and she's talking to Corey and she's like what's your name and he says his name i was like oh, i'm so proud of you and she kind of looks at me like what <laughs> it's like we're working on saying his first name and not his last name whenever he introduces himself to people. Watch him get into sports, though, and, and everybody just calls yeah. him by his last name anyway. <laughs> Which is fine. But, yeah. It's... But, I mean, don't give your whole name to strangers, you know. So, anyway, um, she was like, oh, completely understand. My daughter. And she proceeds to tell me her daughter's whole last name. And she does a little head flip with it. And I was like, oh, that is so cute. <laughs> and she goes, it is cute, but don't say your whole name. And she goes, but yeah, it is cute that <laughs> she does it. Because, <laughs> I mean, there's just some little girls that have this attitude. You know, whatever they say stuff, they I, just have an attitude. Yes. And it's the cutest thing in the world yeah. until the attitude is directed at you. Until there's 13 of them. <laughs> you're outnumbered. Yes, that's true. When you're outnumbered, it's worse. Look at, whoa. I'm still sorting. Look at you go. Oh, I, just I go. didn't, yeah, I didn't do that. My, yeah. I didn't do sort. I, I didn't. I, this is I the easy know. one. You, you're free to do whatever you want. You are more... You're a more skilled puzzler. I, I am not. You're a more... Can I more tell skilled, you... Not skilled, but like, do it more often. That I am working on a puzzle right now. And I'm doing it out of spite. <laughs> because I am not enjoying it. Oh. At all. Well, okay. But I'm doing it out of spite because... Spite against two? The puzzle? Yes. Oh, okay. Because I bought the puzzle on Etsy thinking I was helping a small business. And I was buying from a small business and I got taken. So I wanted to do the puzzle just to see if all the pieces are there and to do the puzzle. But it's, there is so many false fits and it's one of those that has the alphabet on the back of it. But there's so many false fits that you put a whole section together and you flip it over and take out the false fits to put them in the right place Jesus. because there's no way to find out. It's so blurry. The picture is so blurry mm -hmm. and you can't tell unless you flip it over. Huh. It's terrible. <laughs> no, don't bring that one. Oh, well, that's the one I took from here. Oh, but, is that the tree one? Yeah. I love the picture. But there's been some sections, the sections like the white, where it's all white. I just flip well, it all over and do it that way. And that there's no way to put it together. Otherwise, if you don't. yeah. That that picture was probably stolen too, so we could yeah, probably find the original. I did, but I couldn't find a puzzle. I couldn't find it being sold. Oh. So. Yeah, probably they didn't probably make a puzzle. <laughs> it's probably just art, and it's, they stole it. No, no, they did make a puzzle. Oh. I want to say it was Ravensburger. Oh. It could have been Cobble Hill. It could have been. It was one of the bigger names, Benice, yeah. but I don't know who. But yeah, oh, it's terrible. People be people in. But now that I'm in it, I want to get it done just because I like the picture a lot. Oops. I did the original Hollow Taco Rainbow release this week. And then I put all the all the toppings on top because I couldn't control myself. I like it. So I put um, flaky hollow and then linear hollow and then reflective hollow. So I have rainbows on my rainbow. Do you have the stencil things? Yeah, I have some. It's a lot more work. I, I yeah, tend to be like, uh, just keep adding layers 
manicurist instead of like designs. Like whenever I did the butterflies, that took like two hours. I'm coming off of a puzzle where things don't fit and you have to line it up to make sure and this is not that kind of puzzle. Uh, this is a put it in and it goes there. Yeah. And they don't have to line up. Oh, they don't yeah. actually line yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, because that it's a circle puzzle. Yeah, so. Was last night, it was educating, educating the youth about music. I say people. The youth? You know, Gen Z. <laughs> You're funny. Because... Uh, I don't know how the, all of this started, but at one point I said, you know, like Rob Zombie, and like yeah. she goes, "Who's Rob Zombie?" It's like, no, oh, House really? of a Thousand Corpses. She's like, "What?" I was what? like, "The movie, what? House of a Thousand Corpses, uh, Living Dead Girl, like Rob Zombie." And she's <laughs> like, "No," I was like, "You know Rob Zombie music?" So I they started playing it, and she's like, "Oh yeah, I have heard this song." Oh. And I was like, yeah, it's like that that white trash southern rock music, and and like her <laughs> husband goes, that's not a genre. I was like, oh, white what? trash rock is a genre. It's it just is. not an official genre because he was like, what's well, another person? I was like, Kid Rock. Whenever he was doing yeah. rock music, yeah. he was like white trash rock music, right. and he's like, no, he does country. I was like, he does country now. He no, he changed. He, he does both. It's he, well, he he's done he's done everything. Yeah. I was like, it's not a good example. I don't, I don't make me give you examples. It's not even a real genre. And he's like, you can't just make up genres. It's like, it's art. Yes, you can. Uh, that's, yeah. I, mean... I was like, the rock music I listen to is called post-grunge rock music. <laughs> like, that's not a real thing. It's just a word people use. It is a real thing. I know, it's but like, it's, you know, whatever. I mean, you have to make up a genre if you don't have one. So, yeah. It was just funny, and I, so the, we <laughs> argued for probably hours about music and genres and <laughs> talking about different types. I'm like I can't really talk about what is good music. I used to be a juggalo. This is true. This is very, very true. All of my opinions are literally just opinions. <laughs> I think by almost every guy I've ever been around in the general vicinity of has told me I have incorrect opinions about music. So <laughs> I stopped caring a long time ago. I like what I like and I don't give a shit what it is. I like good music. If you don't like my music, you don't like good music. I one of my coworkers sent an official letter to her manager and director asking for a raise. Oh. I've been trying to get her to do for a while. I'm like, just fucking ask. Yeah. What are they going to do? Tell you no? Fine. Exactly. Whatever. She's like, I don't know. And she finally did it and she got a raise. There you go. I was like, damn straight you did. You can't get one if you don't ask. I was like, just ask. Yep. Well, she doesn't get it. So she doesn't get along. It's my old manager. She doesn't get along with the manager. But she does a good job. He, yeah. Their personalities just clash really oh, bad. Okay. I understand And that. like, it's it was always a fight to like, just get him to back off yeah. <laughs> for some reason. I don't know why. So that's why she had to go to the director and be like, listen, I bring value. And I was like, of course you do. I'm like, yeah. You shouldn't have to prove that, but it's very obvious. Yeah, I'm glad she got a raise. She deserved it. She deserves more. She also has three kids. Ooh. They're not her. Well, okay, they are <laughs> hers. She's raised them, but um, they're adopted. Oh. And I see what you're saying. two of them were like the last one was just a surprise. They found out that the mom was pregnant as she was giving birth. Oh, um, hey, <laughs> yeah, they didn't. The, that is so the bio crazy. parents didn't because they have all three of these these parents' kids, right? Um, they had gotten the first two because they got taken away and like oh, they, okay. they yeah. were fostering and then they got the option to adopt them, and then a third one appeared. And they were still <laughs> on their shit, you know? Because mm -hmm. they're drug addicts, I think. Um, Sad. Well, and what's, what's the most tragic part about this story is, yes, obviously, them being drug addicts and, like, falling in and out of it. But they also, for the longest time, like, they were having a lot of time, or a lot of trouble adopting these kids, right? Even though they've raised them from, like, uh, since the second one was a baby. Um, adopting through foster care is not easy. Well, it also is hard because, you know, she's gay. 
So that makes it added more difficulty. Seriously? Like, Seriously? Well, only because, like, they had this uh, social worker who apparently had a problem with that. Okay. And they, the social worker kept, like, blocking it and was, like, lying to both parties what? about what the other one was saying. And, like, building animosity between the bio parents and, the, and her and her wife. I mean, if the and, child is happy, Like, finally cares? they went around, well, and she was making it hard for visitation right. and stuff and trying to get them not to be able to adopt these kids. <sighs> And, like, so they finally, like, went around and talked to the bio parents directly and then learned that all of this was happening. So they fired, or they they called, you know, the whatever organization and got them fired because they were actively destroying these kids' lives. Yeah, I mean, it should be all about the kids. It should have nothing to do with your magic. And I will say that people people need to be diligent because... Yeah. Not always do people have the kids' best interests at heart. They have their own. Yeah. So it's it's a tight rope, but yes. Yeah, but luckily... There needs to be double check, triple check, quadruple checks with kids, always. But, like, she was going through fighting dio parents, having a surprise third kid. Yeah. You know, parents relapsing all the time and, like, trying to adopt these kids. Right. Through all of that while she's worked here and, like, he's constantly giving her crap at work and, like, fuck off. Yeah. She she, she is doing something that everybody talks about doing right. and nobody fucking does. Because exactly. everybody who's, like, especially, like, pro-lifers are always, like, just adopt. And I'm like, oh, really? How many kids have you adopted? It's not easy. I know adopt. it's not easy, but I'm and just saying, be. you can't just say throw things into adoption and then never be a part of that system. Like if you if you believe in adoption so bad, adopt some kids. See how easy that is. It's not easy, but it shouldn't be easy. No, it shouldn't be. I mean, it easy. should be difficult. But to it also shouldn't traumatize kids in the process, you know it, what I mean? It, I hate to say this, but if the kids are getting adopted at an age but I'm saying and not at birth. I'm not saying there's going to be trauma. But I'm not saying trauma from the situation. I'm saying trauma from the system. Oh. Because like it's obviously gonna be... they're going to be traumatized because they're being taken away out of a bad situation. The but the system should be. Yeah, it shouldn't be. It is. It's always but been it, traumatized. It, and it always be. will be. No, it shouldn't. Because be. the kid's coming from trauma. But, but that doesn't mean that you have to continue that trauma. Like that's a silly excuse. It's because they're going. When you go into a, a foster system. facility, a facility. Yeah. It's a facility full of kids that are broken. But I'm saying like... So they're going to lash out at each other. That's what I'm saying though is like if you have, if you know this is going to be a thing, you can work to actively mitigate that damage. But they oh, don't. Oh no, I don't they agree add with what that on. lady did to uh, Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. like stuff like this happens yeah. all the time where they just add on right. and become, and make it worse for these kids. And I agree, they shouldn't do that. Sometimes it's... They should honestly... Honestly, that person should be in jail. I don't think jail. They just should be in the they, position. They, like, there. ruin these kids' lives for years. Like, they they have permanent PTSD from this. Like, but these kids are going to have... Were they doing a, it because they thought they were doing the right thing for the kids? No, they did it because they didn't like gay couples. <laughs> then why put them in the home in the first place? That's just ridiculous. Because they weren't there the, uh, at the beginning. Oh, well then... But I'm just problem. saying, it's, like, not your job to decide, like... It literally is their job, but it's their to job to be To decide that you, you... About somebody's relationship? Like, no. No, it's their job to be open to the situation for the child. So, if the child is thriving in that situation... Yeah, that's what I'm saying is... Leave them alone. Like, they've had these kids... They literally raised these kids for right. six years. Right. And we're still struggling to adopt them. And it's like, yeah. fuck off, dude. <laughs> I don't know if if there was no red flags, I don't. I don't understand. Yeah, I don't understand. They tried to that. invent some because they were like, "You have alcohol in your house," and okay, yeah. So does they they literally this of America or the CPS worker was like, "You have alcohol in your house. You're oh. you're an alcoholic." Oh my! Lord. And was like trying to get nah, it was trying That's to get their ridiculous. kids taken away because they had alcohol in their house. There is some weird things but no that's ridiculous you're allowed to have alcohol in your home it depends did they come from alcoholic families no i don't know they were they were like i think meth or heroin or something they were drug addicts okay and like these kids were taken away from them as infants oh so they don't even remember well i mean they keep they bounce like i think the oldest bounced back a couple times but she was i think rehomed at three and has been with the adopter, 
her, my coworker yeah. for since then. But she's watched them go through relapses right. though because she's had visitation with them and stuff. And like she got to the point at six years old where she's like, I don't want visits with them. Yeah. And that's just so tragic. And they were still forcing so, her to visit them. Oh yeah. Well, because, because the parents wanted it. The main goal is to make the parents the, happy. No. It's for the children. But, but if you if the kid is actively saying their... I don't want to be around them because they don't I'm not happy whenever I'm around them, like okay. <laughs> why why does her what does her it's, voice get ignored? It's a hard situation because when kids well, are they, young like that they should have to stay clean for a year before like they They do. They force no, they were not. They were never clean that long. They have to stay clean for a year to get well, not visitation, but exactly. to get... I'm talking about visitation. Full... Oh, okay. If, if the kid comes to you and is like, I'm not happy doing visitation... I think they have to like, do be clean for like to. six months and also have to be doing programs and have to be having a job. And, you know, they have to be accomplishing milestones in order to get visitation back. Or at least that's what it was back in the 80s and 90s. But I mean, I'm obviously biased because yes. I know this side of it, but like... Just from the stories and the constant, yes. like, every single kid that they had came out addicted to drugs, yeah. like, they weren't trying. It's, I'm telling you, those kids have gone through it. The kids in foster care, who have gone through it. They've had some, they've had some stuff. But, there's so many good stories that come out of that, too. The yeah. other side of the foster care, where they... They've made yeah. it through to the other side, and they've made it. And yeah, but it sounds like war, and it's just great. like, Jesus. It is war. It shouldn't be, though. Like, why Why well, is everybody touting the system as the perfect all, be all, end all, and, like, throw more foster kids... Foster care is not perfect. ...into the system. Humans run. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like, why do people want to throw more kids in the system whenever it's already garbage? Like, what is the success kids. rate? Well, that's, like, the whole... That's the whole... The whole argument from pro life is like, oh, just foster put, care has nothing just to do put with them up for adoption. Well, foster care has nothing to do with abortion. Mm -mm. Yeah, it does because mm -mm. everybody, everybody on the nope. pro life side, the, I won't say everybody, the extreme li extremists on the pro life are like, just put them up for adoption if you don't want them. Well, and it's like, you, no. The very first thing you said, the extremist, don't listen yeah, to but extremists they're the most on vocal. any side. Well, exactly. So don't listen to them. Because they're not coming from... There's not from, extremists on the other side. Either. There's extremists on both sides. There's not. There is. Okay. Every side has extremists. Anyway. I don't know. But anyway, she finally got her raise, which is good. Yeah. She needed it because she has a bunch of kids. But it was I crazy, too. I have a soft too. spot for foster parents and foster kids. Uh, yeah, obviously. Yeah. What's crazy, too, is that he should be the most, her her boss, my old boss, mm -hmm. should be the most understanding because he has three of his own kids. He knows exactly how much that fucking costs. And, like, for some reason, it yeah, just, if you're not doing he sees work. her as, like, a stupid, like, the way he talks to her, he sees her as, like, a stupid kid that doesn't have her shit together. What? Really? Which is so dumb. But does she? Yeah, I mean, okay. she has ADHD, which is very obvious, but, like, she, I don't know, she's a normal human being. She's a grown-ass woman. Like, it's not your job to, like, tell her she doesn't need to be doing stuff is in her first life. Is he her boss? Yeah. Well, as long as she's doing her job, I mean, and he's allowed but the to thing have his is, opinion is like, of what job she's doing. I know, but the thing is, is, like, the way he acts, like, he pulls logs and when she check clocks in in the morning, he does that for yeah. nobody else in the department. Yeah. He never has. He he oh, constantly like is pulling up her statistics. He does that for nobody else. Yeah. He's constantly like, "You're not meeting your milestones," even though she is, and he does that for nobody else. Yeah, like it. It's literally. Well, you said that they her. have. He just they don't doesn't. Get along he just well. doesn't like her. Yeah, and it pisses me off to no end. And whenever I was in that department, I just was like, "No, I will be her manager, and you can fuck off." Essentially. <laughs> Because I would, I would just be like, no, I'll mitigate because you're obviously blind when it comes to what she does because you have a prejudice. Yeah. And I think it's literally he just doesn't like people with, like, her... Because she, she's, like, a fidgeter, adhd -er, oh. You know, like, she... And she thrives in environments that, you know, you can't... Like, if she didn't have to work in an, an office, like, cubicle every day mm -hmm. or in a room full of people all day, she would thrive. Right. But 
unfortunately, corporate America doesn't give a shit about anybody who <laughs> has, like, different needs when it comes to mental health. So he uh, he always sticks her in worse situations instead. Right. And it's like she's not trying to get out of work. She's trying to work in a more conducive way to her brain chemistry. Right. Like, I don't understand why you don't get that. He fucking is a biochemist. He should know shit like this. So here's my thing. It's a job, right? If you don't like the environment and the environment's not, not good for you, it's not the get environment. A job. She you loves her that. she loves her job. She does well whenever people just leave her the fuck alone, but he will not. Right. He does not give her room to breathe. Well, and I get it, but I'm just saying if if the environment is not healthy for you and you don't thrive in that, then go to a But the thing does. is, is like there's options, right? Because whenever she's right, in her cubicle, saying. she's fine. But like he doesn't feel like he can watch over her when she's in her cubicle. So he That's makes true. her sit in the help desk, which is full of people 24-7. Right. I had problems with this. I would sit in there sometimes and just like there would be days where I'd be like, you guys can't talk to me today because I will scream <laughs> if... I have to talk to a human because I would sit in this room and like just being around people all day would fill me with such anxiety right. that whenever I got home, I was just a ball of anger and hate. Right. And like, so I should have just quit my job because the environment that I was working in, no, I should have just been given the option to not sit in that room. But, and I okay. could have still done my, I, I could have done my were, job better. If you were paying to be there, yes, you should be, be given. Yes, I'm saying. I bring, I, but I brought a lot of value to that company, so I'm they are paying me to sit there. But I'm just saying, you're paying, like, you're getting paid to but, be there. Yeah, but I'm just saying the job is not to sit in a room that makes you filled with anxiety and dread. The job is to do the work, but, and I did the work. But, like, I shouldn't have to sacrifice my mental health because you think it's better for me to sit in a room all day when you're not even fucking there. That's the thing is he's not even there 90% of the time. He disappears for days on end because his kid is sick or he has to go do something at home or he has to, like, like, help his wife. that old boss that you had that would, that had the extramarital affair and... He's not that bad. (laughs) I I won't say that. But, um... I don't know. It just pisses me off because it's just such a doubled standard. I just don't think if you go to a job that they're required to give you certain things. I think why? So people in wheelchairs are aren't required to have a ramp. That's the same thing. Well, every building is required to have a ramp. Um, but it's, I'm just saying, if law. you can say that but people with saying, physical disabilities need I certain accommodations, I, that's what I'm saying, though, is people with physical disabilities are you're required as a business to accommodate certain physical disabilities. Why not the same for mental health? Because You would rather people kill themselves oh, and, yeah, and, no. and quit their jobs? No. Or just, like, job, just yes. accommodate them by giving them for certain allowances? Asking to be in a quieter space is not very fucking hard to do. Asking to work it from home. It depends on the job. It does, I, but I'm telling you, from this job, this right. job that right. I know what I right. can do from right. home and I have done. I don't give a shit about other jobs. I'm saying this job, I don't. they can accommodate that. They just don't want to. Because they can't keep their eyes on their coworkers. If you don't, if you don't trust your workers enough to like do their job, then just fucking fire them. Like they obviously can do their job if you would just give them allowances, but you don't, and you would rather them just like fucking be miserable all the time. Right. But at the same time, the company, the company culture, like we're a family, we're a family. It's like really, because you treat me just like my extended real family, and it's not great. <laughs> Like, I, I think that's old bullshit to be like, well, the company doesn't owe you anything. It's like, you're there 40 hours a week. They can accommodate. They, they'll they buy a microwave so you can heat up your lunch. What's the difference? And giving you a quiet space. There's no oh, difference. Oh, that's a good argument, my, like, they give That's you a, a good argument. They give you a fridge to right. put your lunch in. Well, I think it's different, but no, I do... But to give you, like, a, a closet where you can sit and cool down for 30 minutes. Well, and they do have... I mean, women have fought for this, but they do have rooms now for women to go and um, we, pump. We don't. Oh. Um, but <laughs> women have had to fight for that to have. I will say it was really interesting because, like, we're doing our healthcare open enrollment every year, um, which... This new healthcare plan that they're taking on is actually pretty good, I think. Um, not that I care, because we're probably not going to use it. Um, one of the guys, some guy at the like all company meeting we have every quarter, mm-hmm. was like, 
what about programs for midwives? I was like, oh, that guy. He was like, <laughs> what about leave for maternity? I was like, he's preaching. He must like have just had guy. a kid. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, somebody I, gets it. 